Yo, what up? Welcome to another episode of the Oakland Warriors podcast. I'm Patrick and I'm joined. It's been a minute, but I'm joined by my very good friend, the professor, Ramesh Srinivasan, <laughs> is back. It's He's back. It's a... Uh, it's playoff time, so he he had to be back on the show. I had to have him back on. How you doing, man? The professor returns, huh? <laughs> for, only for the epic victories, right? <laughs> <laughs> the the Warriors they they beat the uh, Denver Nuggets one eighteen one thirteen in Denver. They took a three zero lead, and that was an exciting game. And I was sweating like crazy the whole time. What I mean, what were your impressions uh, of uh, of this win? I mean, Denver played with a lot of fire and force. They had the refs um, giving them more of the calls, at least in the interior. Um, They were making a lot of threes and open shots earlier in the game, and our defense really struggled. But we never really let them, at various points in the game, get too far ahead where we couldn't have a response, you know, to kind of keep it within range. Like in the first half, it was like around 10, second half, the most they got ahead in the fourth quarter and in that disastrous third quarter was, I think, five. So we were able yeah. to hang in there. And then really when it counted most, man, you know, championship medal. Yeah. You showed up. I mean, championship medal, Iggy, Draymond, you know, obviously Curry. It's a pool party time, you know. It's just, it's a pool party. <laughs> yeah, man. Like, I got to say, because I've been saying this, I mean, for since, you know, when Andre Iguodala signed and even towards the end of the season, uh, all I really wanted was to see those four dudes, Steph, Clay, Draymond, Andre Iguodala in the playoffs in crunch time and just to see it, you know, just to see it. And it was, it was, it was crazy. Cause it was like, you know, they didn't, didn't, didn't seem to miss a beat and you had ultimate confidence in them that they knew what they were doing even though even though uh Steph missed some free throws and Draymond got in some foul trouble and whatnot but you know Clay is doing his thing he's just hanging out hitting shots <laughs> and uh you know I I kind of sensed that this was a game that was you know obviously going to be Denver's best shot they were going to take their you know biggest swing and if you could fight that off then obviously 3-0 it's over and It's funny because it was like a game where, you know, Denver, they played well at the beginning again. And then all of a sudden it was like, you know, they were hanging in there, hanging in there. And it was just a question of whether or not the Warriors would just keep, you know, adding to their lead, you know, two steps forward, one step back, and then just, you know, breaking it open. And I thought they were going to break it open in the third. I don't, you know, the the fouls ended up evening out ultimately in the end, but, um, you know, I felt like that third quarter was a little, there's some early questionable calls, but you know, uh, it is what it is. And, and these guys know that that stuff happens, especially on the road. And, uh, you know, they, they, they fought through it. I mean, I'm pretty blissed out. We were able to hang in there, you know, that Denver was, um, Denver played a great game. Denver played a great game. I mean, even some of the players who, weren't playing who were like very bad in previous games like Aaron Gordon like he was more ferocious in this game but when it all came down to it all of those really critical important plays that were made in the last four minutes of the game with Draymond with five fouls were -hmm. made by us we made those critical plays quite a few Mm -hmm. bonehead plays quite a few turnovers right like earlier in the game but somehow in the fourth we were able to make those critical plays when it most mattered. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I, like you, man, I was, it's like a dream to see the four of them back together, right? Iggy, uh, yeah. Draymond, uh, Steph, and, and the Splash Brothers, Steph and Clay. And with Poole now, wow. It's, and so, so seeing them, the four of them together, I'll be honest, like, it, I really wanted to see them, but I was also very, like nervous that's what a real fan is i guess i was really yeah. nervous that like what if they're what if they like screw it up when it most matters um and you know i and what we saw was i mean the small plays right deflections knocking out knocking the ball out of people's hands tips these were all be happening with with i mean Iguodala and draymond made many many huge plays in the last couple of minutes and so my nightmare was draymond was gonna foul out 
and <laughs> we would lose our we would just lose our spirit and then i would just be super bummed and stressed out about sunday because i can't watch the game <laughs> real time on sunday you know, I'm surprised they didn't attack Draymond after he got his fifth a little bit more deliberately. I know they got Jokic the ball a few times and Draymond backed off, but you know, like I figured they would take him down into the post a little bit more, but that never happened. But Jordan Poole, man, like the dude played 34 minutes. He only shot 13 times, nine for 13, six for nine from the line, three for five from three, 27 points. I mean, you know, the big question mark for me, especially at the beginning was like, could he do it on the road? You know, and we'd known that he could play on the road. His his uh, hot streak in March. I mean, I'm sure half of that was at least on the road, if not more. Yeah. But in the playoffs, and I wasn't sure at first. You know, the the first quarter again was a little bit uh, iffy, tilting towards Denver, looking looking solid. But I was just super impressed. He he had that one early three pointer in the corner where he got past Boogie Cousins, and then. Kind of like similar to the last game, but in the opposite corner, he took the step back towards the corner three and actually made it. And then that play in the in crunch time where uh, Steph shot it, Wiggins, I mean, I'll get to him, but Wiggins got that rebound okay. amongst three or four nuggets because he just saw it come off the rim so well. Oh my gosh, that rebound. Yeah, yeah he got it back to Steph and then Steph passed it to pool wide open split second hesitated because he was about to shoot the three saw he was, had a huge lane to the basket and that that shot was hard man that clutch flipped over his head reverse or something without the backboard i i didn't even realize that went in <laughs> this guy this guy's a special player i mean he's this he's a star in the making i think he's already a star and he is absolutely fearless and extremely talented and this is the key thing. He can make important decisions in crunch time with pressure on him. So it's not just his physical tools and his like whatever his his confidence. It's also his acumen. He has yeah. the acumen that is critical to to really prospering in the Warrior system. And that was just that just really makes him part of who we are and who we will be, like a central part, right? Because he yeah. can. He has just gotten better and better and better, but his his improvement is not merely like physical. His decision making skills are pretty incredible. I mean, he's become an incredible passer, incredible distributor, and he's not tentative, you know, when it comes down to it. But he's also not like kind of um, how do I say that like unrealistically cocky, <laughs> right? You know, like right, he's yeah. just like secure. This dude's twenty two, man. This dude's yeah, were we yeah. like when we were twenty two? I don't know. No, man, I was <laughs> I was wandering the earth. <laughs> nah. And and um it's it's funny to me too about like Jordan Poole. He the the seriousness that he takes himself and the game, well not himself, but like he approaches his craft. You remember when he was a rookie and like it was him and Pascal and like all the right. clay was injured and Steph was injured and they were just kind of like Lucy goosey doing whatever and um they seem to kind of goof off a lot and and not that they didn't take the craft seriously or the, or the game but it was just like oh these are like these young guys who don't know what it's like to be in the nba or or, or play yeah. for this organization and you know all the chatter that we've read heard elsewhere about pool taking the mentorship and asking questions from all these guys taking that seriously taking that opportunity seriously i mean uh, who who wouldn't you know it's like it's like learning from the best in any field right like you have uh three locked hall of famers you know and maybe yeah. maybe a fourth one in Iguodala. and yeah i'm 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 stunned i'm stunned because like clay wasn't doing this at 22 steph he was he could have done this at 22 i think but his his maturity and his his love of the moment is just wow. He he didn't choke at all. And another thing is like you talk about his quick decision making, like that was one of the things he always had to improve on because he would get the ball and hold right. it. And it was all about get the ball, make a decision, do something with it. And he used to just like mess around with it and stand there or dribble. And, you know, when he dribbles now, it's like deliberate. They trust him, et cetera. But uh, I'm, I'm, I'm surprised because – Heck, man, like a year and a half ago when he was playing in the G League and he got swatted by Jonathan Kaminga viciously in the first game against the G League at night, I was like, 
Woo, man, this guy is, is not going to make it. <laughs> yeah, you know what it is, man? It's a blend of confidence and humility. The humility exactly. to be able to to actually like learn from Hall of Famers, from championship, from all time great players, right? Like like Steph and Clay and Draymond. And yeah, we got We got a shout out. Uh, Mike Dunleavy Jr. Apparently was the one who, according to my brother Mahesh, uh, is the one who like urged the Warriors to draft Jordan Poole. So yeah. uh, I I will give Mike Dunleavy Jr. props, but I wonder if he was the one that urged them to draft. Jacob Evans the third too. <laughs> <laughs> Touche. <laughs> uh, and then also, you know, just seeing like uh, four pieces of the Hamptons five out there, and then uh, throwing in Andrew Wiggins. Um, I was mm-hmm. I was curious because like Wiggins, you know, like this is his first time really on a big stage. He's played in this round of the playoffs before, but once he, cl- when he clanked that first corner three, I was like, Oh, <laughs> and then when he, when he nailed that other one, man, I was like, okay, the, the Harrison Barnes vibes are, are gone, you know? Well, that was the big shot. And, yeah. and then, and then how that fueled him with the biggest rebound of the game. Right. And maybe of know, his career. <laughs> his career. Perhaps probably the biggest play of his career, right? Yeah. And um, he was, unlike the first two games where he was just sort of playing in flow, taking care of rebounds, defensing, like defensive, like stud madman on defense. This game, he was, we, we saw, we saw the sort of passive, tentative, indecisive version. He was mm-hmm. on the court a lot, actually, man, but like you didn't see him, you know? And yeah, something about, making i feel like he the fact that he took that you know both of them he kind of like was tentative with both those threes in the corner he kind of like set himself as tentative i know it's a big moment right yeah and he's andrew wiggins he's he's mellow and not you know a shark necessarily at least not publicly but yeah, you know yeah. the fact, not not jordan pool but he's but oh. the way but the but the way that he made that shot and then his incredible athleticism to like he sprinted from the other side, uh, you know, like the the like width of the court to to jump up and get that rebound, mm-hmm. and there were like three Denver guys, like Nuggets, like right around him, and that saved the game. That pass to another pass to that crazy Jordan Poole yeah. play. I mean, that was the transition. That was huge, huge, huge. That play, I was going crazy. Yeah, and when you think about it, uh, the, you know, the game was still close, but, like, the Warriors had a handful of, I mean, lack of a better term, maybe it's corny, but, like, championship-level plays, you know, where um, they could have been daggers, they could have been, you know, they're just very clutch. And at the end of the day, the Nuggets didn't have those. I'm trying to remember the shots they made down the stretch, and, you know, they were, like, uh, backdoor cuts or layups and stuff, which are fine, but, like, you know, the Warriors were making those big plays that, you kind of have to get, you know, to win games like this. Those are the things that tip tip them in your direction. And you know, Wiggins, like you know, taking those shots from the corner, it's crazy because I'm pretty sure there were a handful of threes during the game that he passed on. You know, yeah. like where there was kind of a scramble and like he would get it open and then he would look for a for a pass and he would pass it off. I think one he passed it off and then he got it back and then he missed a layup or something. Yeah. Um, so, you know, uh, uh, we'll forget those for now, I suppose. Um, I think he scored like nine points. I mean, you can tell, you can tell me Patrick. Yeah. Um, yeah. It was nine points. And, yeah. uh, yeah, it's, uh, yeah. it's a solid nine, nine and six. I keep saying that's all, I mean, I want more than nine from him, but like, you know, uh, six shots, maybe more than six shots from him, but you know what I mean? Like he just needs to be solid and do and and play his role without um without overextending or being detached and uh it seems like he's obviously engaged and uh i I always look for andrew wiggins fist pumps you know and uh (laughs) those are those those actually make me smile because i'm like that's his that's him at his most demonstrative and (laughs) he's and it's pretty funny like i was was watching them on the bench man like right after that right after we won the game and he just had this like big grin he was kind of this like sheepish grin on his face i was yeah. like all right this is this is who this dude is like he's i guess probably like some mellow canadian guy 
Um, <laughs> I mean, it's from Toronto, I believe. Um, I do want to mention yeah. one other thing. I, I'm sure you caught it on the broadcast, but I don't know if you, um, that, that timeout, that critical timeout, just, I don't know, a couple of minutes before the end, it was Jordan Poole who yeah. was exhorting the Hall of Famers. Like he was mm-hmm. like, I was like, what? I mean, like that really says a lot about not only how he's bought in, obviously, but how confident he is. Mm-hmm. And his confidence, I feel like, really changed changed the game. And the fact that this guy is a leader also in the making, you know, mm-hmm. um, Jordan mm-hmm. Poole. Mm-hmm. And that, and to it, me, is really amazing. And it's, it's very much just an offshoot of the culture, right? Like, uh, clearly, Steph coming off the bench, he's trying to show uh, that it's fine coming off the bench and it doesn't really matter in case Wiggins comes off the bench, in case Poole has to come off the bench once Steph goes back into the starting lineup. But a lot of it is too. It's like they seem to have this vibe where it's like if you earn like the respect and the ability to play and if you put the work in and if you are not afraid of the moment and you uh, do positive things on the court, et cetera, all the whatever, however they phrase it, um, then they're open to you. You know what I mean? They're open to guys like that coming in and and earning that and um you know whereas like a lot of other teams they they may not they're, they're huge stars will be like D- you know don't talk to me you know what i mean like this is uh this is my moment not yours or i know what i'm doing here and yeah. um and things like that you know so uh, i love it and you know like i love you and i have talked about how you know pool is kind of like a a, a bridge player for the warriors to the next era yes. but what I also like about him is that he's different from Steph and Clay, and he has a little bit of Draymond in him, and he has a little bit of Andre in him too. You see That's it in so interviews, cool. right? His his coyness, but he's like Dre because <laughs> he will shout, he will he won't oh, yeah. mouth off as uh, aggressively, but he he'll he'll talk, he'll talk. Oh yeah, I mean he's already remember he got into it. I mean I actually saw it when it happened live, man. Uh, he got into it with CP3 like at that game when we almost beat Phoenix at home, which really yeah. was kind of like the beginning of turning us around because after that, after that horrible three quarters against Utah, we made that comeback. And ever since then, look at us. We haven't, I don't think we've lost since that Utah victory, if I'm not mistaken, where we get where we get that massive comeback we had against Utah, right? You're right. It was Utah and then SAC and then the Lakers and then uh, the Spurs and the Pelicans and then three in a row against Denver. <laughs> no, that's a good call. I did not even realize yeah. that. And that's all I'd want. I wanted them to get some momentum. Like, yeah. You know, who cares what happened like the two weeks prior, right? It's like, get some momentum, feel good about yourselves, get your game and your bodies right. And then uh, go into these uh, playoffs and, and, and do what you do when you guys are healthy you know you were saying Uh, that actually a bunch on the podcast so i was trying to listen i mean i listened to to oakland warriors like pretty much every day and i don't think i listened to today's one yet but i've listened i listened like 80 90 percent of them and they kind of helped me because i am such a fanatic that i get i catastrophize i was catastrophizing what was going on as you know (laughs) i was like oh man you think we're gonna fall to the plan remember i I was texting you that. Yeah, 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 for sure. Yeah. And and like, look, like, it's really interesting how in basketball, I mean, it's kind of obvious in a way, but it's it's notable how a team can go from being like pretty bad to all of a sudden flipping the switch, partly because of personnel, but like partly just like basketball is so much momentum. And and obviously that occurs in a huge way within games, right? With runs and so on. Mm-hmm. And I mean, we. I think we've won eight games in a row. So, like, let's not worry about the end of the regular season. But how that transitioned into this is yeah. is really like you've been talking about on the podcast is really huge. Um, is really huge. And now, you know, now like forget the national media are just you know they're just like hype hype machine either hype or dis machine stuff. But like you know now the national media is talking about us as like favorites, you know, or at least con- like yeah. legit contenders inner circle contenders right and yeah. so i think everybody should like ignore them and list and look at who's on the floor and our experience and how we played today d- tonight during crunch time when it really came down to it how draymond made the critical play at the end to slap that ball out of Jokic's hands he did not foul he didn't get a foul call on him 
and that sealed the game. Like it's like those plays. Iguodala was in the middle of stuff like that all the time. Like mm-hmm. over the last, like you know, at various points in the fourth quarter. It's just yeah. like those little things that don't show up on a stat sheet are championship plays. Exactly, and I got to be honest. I had to rewind the the Draymond steal on Jokic at the end because it. Ha- I thought Jokic just lost the dribble. You know, I didn't even realize. And then on the replay, that was you know closer up. I saw Draymond's arm go in there, which is, I mean, that's a tough play, right? And and um, I also have to say, I um, I don't know about you, but when Andre Godala went flying in for that dunk on the pick and roll, oh my gosh! Uh, I I there was there was about sixty five percent of me that thought he was gonna like get hung up on the rim, so I was a little worried for a second. But he got up, he got up high. Well, he didn't he get like, he didn't get hung up on the rim. He flew over it. I yeah, mean, I, it looked like my like an Air Jordan poster from like back in the day he was like one hand like flying yeah. over he posterized barden he yeah, like totally yeah. Posterized him. he flew over him that guy's yeah pops it, is pretty i mean he's always been hyper athletic right but yeah but he he's been you know he's had a couple missed dunks during the season that oh, yeah. you know he only played like 30 <laughs> some odd games right so he's right. had a couple missed dunks and i was like oh please don't miss this you know and right. um and he kept going up and up and on the replays like his he got his arm like really high up above the the rim. And I realized that he probably wouldn't have gone for that if he didn't feel it. You know what I mean? If he didn't feel good in his legs and his, uh, and his body in general, you know, but everyone went crazy on the bench. I mean, talk about stuff to just get, get the culture moving, get people like yeah. being like, we can do this. We're going to win this. Like, I mean, that was a huge, huge play. The fact that he could do that. This guy that's, I mean, it's, obvious right like we have him for these particular moments and also yeah. for like his incredible he's like one of the most intelligent people probably who's ever played nba basketball you know the, but but he's but he's 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 the man i mean and and how about this acupuncture on his neck after neck spasms huh i love acupuncture i think yeah, acupuncture I, can help it helped my yeah. arms yeah, like exactly. Like for me, it's always been keep the dude healthy, keep him out for 60 games of the regular season if you have to, because you have him on your roster for these games and these moments. Yeah. The NBA playoffs mean next level basketball. Get in on the first round action with DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NBA. This week, new customers can bet $5 on any team to win and get $150 in free bets instantly. You win no matter what. All DraftKings Sportsbook customers can also bet on NBA hoops with same game parlays. Combine multiple bets from the same game for a bigger payout. The more legs you add, the more money you can win. Plus, each day of the first round, get a risk-free bet up to $10 if your same game parlay doesn't hit. Download the Draft DraftKings Sportsbook app now. Use promo code TBPN. Bet $5 on any NBA team to win their game during the first round of the playoffs and get $150 in free bets instantly. That's promo code TBPN at DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NBA. Minimum age and eligibility restrictions apply. See show notes for details. I also got to point out, like, in that first quarter when Gary Payton, I mean, that dude hit two big three-pointers in the corner. Uh, Wait, and he may have hit a... He had a third one from the top of the key too. Three from threes, time later in the game, half. yeah, yeah. Three, so like he, he was three for three from the three point line, and he had eleven points. And that is something that was like a knock on him up until the beginning of this season when he started working on his shot and he cleaned it up a little bit. That he just couldn't shoot. So uh, he's not the best, but he's actually a very very serviceable uh, NBA three point shooter you know um yeah and the key with him man is like he in the first half his presence like kept us like in the game at various points when denver was ahead and pushed us ahead when we had those like various like leads in the first half and at the end i mean he was so it was really like he was it's 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 what you've said on this podcast a million times not hesitating you got the open shot take it Mm -hmm. you take an open Mm -hmm. shot you know, and you run to the ball or everyone runs to the ball, you might get the rebound because it's a three, you know? Mm-hmm. And so not hesitating and he wasn't hesitating. He did hesitate a little more, a couple couple chances he had in the second half, I noticed. But, mm-hmm. you know, it's not necessarily that that's bad. If you can get a better shot, you go for it. But you got to quickly make the decision. That's really the key. I think the Warriors yeah. offense is just about visual acuity, you know, the ability to like see the floor, see movement on the floor and, and make a choice to pass or shoot quickly. 
quickly. Mm -hmm. You hold the yeah. ball, you slog it all off, and you go Kelly Oubre, right? So it's like, <laughs> you know, poor guy. Kelly but, Oubre taking a three with Steph standing like boom, a foot boom, away from him, right? Boom, boom. I'm going to dribble it eight times. I'm going to turn around and check up a three. And <laughs> it's, it's yeah, for sure. Things. Just seeing this team like run its offense, like with oh. Steph, Clay, and Poole, uh, just actually when you just take a step back and see all the movement, all yeah. the actions, it's like, geez, <laughs> like yeah. how do you defend this, right? It's it's uh it's it's crazy, but um, I mean, Clay Thompson, the dude was ten for eighteen, six for thirteen from three, twenty six points. He it felt kind of quiet, you know. He wasn't mm -hmm. like making sure. much noise it wasn't talking much but like he shot the most shots Steph was nine for 17 so clay shot the most and wow. you know to me i just have to uh i just have to say for me it's like seeing clay just hit those big threes where he just yeah. catches and shoots um yeah. that's that's clay i know he can do a lot more and he'll be even better next season but that's such a reassuring thing right like those were killing the nuggets like those shots by Gary Payton that you don't expect where you leave a guy open those kill a team that that their morale is so low that it was just like digging in them digging in them digging in them and if it wasn't for those you know uh bad fouls in the first uh half of the third quarter then this game could have gotten out of hand but you know um it's 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 a uh it's fun to watch this team again and you know i hope yeah, especially after Poole got a little dinged up and Draymond right. tweaked that ankle a little bit. Like yeah, I hope they close this out on on uh, on Sunday. Yeah, yeah, I was worried. I mean, I'm sure all of us, all of us fans are, or mm -hmm. were, you know, about Draymond when he stayed down for a while, you know, and uh, and Poole had that elbow wrapped up. Apparently, it was heating. That's what the announcers were saying. Yeah which meant that he was coming back into the game rather than ice, which should mean he was like done for the game. So that was, that was like that kid's 22. So I kind of just somehow hope and assume that no matter what happens, he just gets back up and he's had so many like hits and stuff. I mean, he's not John Morant who hits the floor on every play, but uh, pool ends up on the ground a lot, a lot, a lot. right? Like a lot. Every, almost like, every layup, to be honest, like, more often yeah, than not. you don't you know he just flies around he's uninhibited on every yeah. level and so it's part of his supreme confidence so you got to love it um but yeah i was i was also concerned about draymond i was really concerned that if he if he fouled out that we would just kind of like 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 lose our sort of like our heart in a way our you know our spirit um but none of those things happened and now we have a real chance to just finish it off finish yeah. it off on Sunday um, and rest, 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 you know, I mean, it's um, and hope for a long series for um, Memphis and, and Minnesota as well. Yeah. I think that, you know, in this game, it was like they wanted to get it. Uh, if, if I was a Warriors, I would have wanted just to get it in the Nuggets mind, like, Oh no, here we go again. And I think it was getting there until that third quarter, but like definitely the, Sunday game is going to be interesting, right? Because like yeah. no team has ever come down. Oh, three. It's honestly pretty much a wrap. And if you are the Denver Nuggets and if you're not feeling good, if your morale is low, if there's like, you just, you gave it your best shot and you don't know if you can do any better, then you're going to be like, well, you know, come out fighting. And then once you get behind, it might just be, that might just be it. Right. Because you're like, do I really want to get on a flight to San Francisco and, and play a couple more games or should I, you know, is it so bad if uh, we get swept in four, but um, you know, we'll see, we'll see. I'm, I'm looking forward to, to that one. And uh, you know, just, I, I very much want these guys to close out and get some rest because they look like they're in rhythm, you know, and that's what I wanted. I was like, Oh, maybe a six game series could be good for them but they look like they're clicking and what would be really good for them is to get some rest and then start getting some practices, practices and some scrimmages in and, yeah. um, and go from there. I mean, we got to remember like Draymond, Clay, Steph, and, you know, today pool and obviously Guadala all have various things that, you know, would be good to rest and work yeah. through, you know, in different ways. And, um, 
And one of the, you know, most amazing things about the Warriors dynasty, which, you know, we hope is kind of, you know, re kind of brought mm-hmm. back, you know, it was just a little pause, you know, and yeah. <laughs> just a little pause and uh, <laughs> is um, how they would, they would step on your throat when they were up yes. three. So it would step on your throat and we just go up 20 in the first quarter. And yeah. that's, and, and so let's see, you know, I think we know we're better than mm-hmm. the Nuggets and that, and we've seen during various regular seasons, how that sort of like confidence and cockiness can actually end up costing us. And we had trouble closing games right during the year yeah. and stuff. So here's an opportunity for us to say like, it's the playoffs. It's a different season. We're finally at full strength. First time yeah. of the year. Yeah. which is amazing by the way let's let's knock them out knock them out and just be like hey and then let you know they have their own excuses i mean they don't have their second and third best player so correct yeah you know, they had a great year all right onward yeah yeah and reading up on some denver nuggets uh local articles oh. and some fan blogs and some comments they feel like they that this is <laughs> coming no matter what right like, <laughs> that they were behind the eight ball from the beginning throughout the season and at the beginning of the series. And another thing to me, it's like just uh, the last thing I'll say, the random old thing I noticed was that I was surprised that down by five, once the Nuggets missed their final shot, that with like 15, 16 seconds left, they gave up, right? And I know that it's unlikely that they would win, but you're going to go down 03 and if you're down 03 it's over <laughs> you know you're you're almost more likely to try to come back from 5 points down right. uh, with, with 15 seconds than just like you know 03 but you know cuz to me that was like a sign i was like okay they're done they're done because you know like the warriors they had their defensive guys on the court right they didn't have their best free throw shooters and their best free throw shooters were missing free throws granted i think clay ended up with the ball and he's a great free throw shooter especially this year but you figured like give it one more shot you know maybe clay hits one misses one you're down by six and then right you know uh i just i, I look at that as kind of a bummer because i hate it when teams do that uh, but in this case it's a good thing because they just seemed like they were defeated and that was like the last meaningful shot of this whole series that they're going to take if i can you know be so blunt yeah, I think so. And I think that, I mean, at full strength with the Warriors, like speed, their ability to play great defense to, despite being small, smaller, yeah. their ability if Wiggins in particular is flying around to get rebounds. We did, it felt, I mean, you should check the totals, but it felt like we had some struggles with rebounds today, a little more than the first two games. I could be wrong with that. Um, 44 but- to 30 nuggets on the rebound okay see yeah yeah i feel like we might have out rebounded them in at least one if not both of the first two games but close at least better than that total yeah yeah for sure for sure yeah but outside of that i mean just you know this was like at full strength with their ability to pass the ball if we're not turning the ball over that was a huge part of our problem honestly that's what that's what allowed the nuggets to have that terrible third quarter we had a terrible third quarter for the first time in a while Mm -hmm. um where we were up 10, we were down five. It was a 15 point swing. I think we were down five at the, around that at the end of the third, but at down five at one point in the third, at some point in the third. But just that, you know, turnover, minimize turnovers, keep passing the ball, find the open guy, fly to the ball, fly to for those rebounds. And if we can stay simple like that, um, that would be great. I do want to ask you one quick thing, which is sure. what do you think? What did you think about the, you know, spiffy new lineup, which we don't know the name for. I don't think I'm going to go for a PTSD, man. But um, <laughs> no. that's, that's what's trending on Twitter. I don't know if that's trending on your algorithmic news feed, mm-hmm. but um, I've seen it. I've seen it. How um, were they today? Were they like with the plus and minus? It didn't feel like they were quite as uh, dominant. And it felt like no. maybe that was because we were turning the ball over. Curry was turning the ball over a bunch, I remember, in the second quarter. I'm not mistaken, or maybe the third. But yeah, I mean, the fact that Aaron Gordon played better and Jokic played yeah. better, they they were just bigger, and they gave the Warriors a lot of problems earlier on, I think. And 
you know, to me, a combination, right? Like you said it right there, the turnovers. And I think that overall, the Nuggets just played with more energy, you know, plain and simple. And the Warriors, they played a little down, which is to be expected when you're on the road in this kind of environment, you know, like anyone that thought that the Warriors would come in and steamroll them the same way, um, I, like when win by 20, uh, I, I don't think they understand like playoff basketball, <laughs> right? Because but, like the Nuggets are going to show up at home, you know, and I also think, and, and again, I don't want to say it was all the refs because once you get a ticky tack foul, you got to watch out for giving up another ticky tack foul. But Looney caught a couple early in the third and Draymond got one and, you know, it just slowed things down a little bit. Mm -hmm. So, right. You know, uh, I think Denver just met the challenge a little bit more and Mm -hmm. I'd have to see this lineup again uh, because when they were on the court in crunch time, more or less, they look pretty good. (laughs) Yeah. At the end. At the end. (laughs) Like whether it was Iguodala or or Wiggins, it was like they look good out there. Yeah. It was great. It was great. Oh. What a what a what a great win! What a reminder of the old days that the old days are 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 not over. If yeah. anything, like there's a whole new chapter here with our Hall of Famers and Pool and like this really nice fitting team. GP two Iguodala, like all these guys. Otto Porter had some moments, etc. Right. Mm-hmm, and um, mm-hmm. even Billy a little bit less than yeah. the other two games, but you know, um, I'll take it. I'll take it. Um, you know, there was one I was seeing on Twitter. People were like, "Bring Kaminga in, bring Kaminga in." Yeah, are we going to see Kaminga? Like when it matters. I, I think we'll see him. Uh, maybe not against the Nuggets, unless it's a blowout in Game Four. Uh, but we'll definitely see him in other matchups. And I've always said I don't know how how long everybody, all these old guys can stay healthy or if they'll need like rest, like, you know, Iguodala with his neck. And I, w- I was wondering like, would they even bring in Kaminga if Draymond fouled out? Exactly. But to me, they would probably play, they would have probably put in Otto Porter Jr. or something. But I also would expect, <laughs> even though Kaminga played well in Denver the last time they played there, you know, like I think he wouldn't want to st- just throw him in to crunch time if he could avoid it. You know, Kerr wouldn't want to do that. Yeah. And I would I would expect to see Kaminga's first minutes uh, in the next round against either the Grizzlies or the T-Wolves just because of their youth and athleticism. Uh, again, not like a ton of minutes, but maybe to counteract some of, uh, some of their guys. Um, and if Kerr had his brother, then he might even just – have his first minutes be at chase center, you know, but who knows Uh, the, the, the first two games in the next round could be if the Timberwolves win at chase center or more likely. So uh, on the road in Memphis. So especially after that terrible collapse, the T wolves choked that hard. I was watching that. They choked it up. They were awful. Awesome. I, I watched that as well. And oh. I don't know if I've ever seen a team blow 25 point leads over 25 point leads twice in a game. Twice. Like I, I couldn't believe it. And it's one of those games, man. Right. Like here's the thing, right. If the Warriors had lost game three, then the narrative always changes. It's like, yep. Oh, you know, it's everybody's holding home court. That's all that matters. But Obviously, you win game three and it's like over, right? If the Timberwolves had won and held on to to their lead in game three, then it's like, okay, they're asserting themselves at home. And that blowout that they had last game didn't matter because they took one in Memphis. They got home court. And then they would have really, really, really like game four would have been a pressure situation for the Grizzlies. But now it's kind of a now I think instead of having a long six, seven game series, I think it's going to be Grizzlies in five because I don't yeah. think Minnesota is strong enough, has enough fortitude to cut, to come back from, from a, such a brutal, brutal uh, uh, way to lose. <laughs> and I don't know. I don't think Towns does either, by the way. 
Um, yeah, yeah. Edwards, though, I'm a big fan of that guy. Edwards, is, Edwards has got the uh, cojones. And, you know, Beverly missed a couple of open threes, too, but whatever. He's never been yeah, known yeah. being a great that's, shooter. But that's, anyway. that's, that's why he, he gets he was open. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, yeah, and why he was wide open. I'm really looking forward to I mean, there's really nothing like NBA playoffs. It's a completely different beast than the regular season. 82 games it's a it's a lot of pain to wait through to get to this point and you know it better than anyone <laughs> did you do a podcast with every single one of these 82 games i, I think it was either 80 or 79 oh boy Whew. yeah that's incredible that's way more than warriors all 82 <laughs> <laughs> but, but, no, uh, I'm yeah. thrilled. but, but i did more than that you know because i had like episodes that weren't about games too so you know yeah yeah. Well, thanks for doing it. I'll say at least for myself, I'm thrilled to join you. Now, yeah. No. Thanks. Thanks again for coming on. Um, you know, uh, come on whenever you want. Hopefully, these playoffs, the Warriors have a long run and make it to the finals, and it's going to get more and more intense. I drama. I can't wait, man. So, all right. Here we go. Cool. That is another episode of the Oakland Warriors podcast. Be sure to subscribe wherever you get your podcast. Feel free to hit me up on Twitter at Patrick Epino, E-P-I-N-O, or at Oakland Warriors. You can find Ramesh at Ramesh Media for his non-basketball takes. <laughs> <laughs> and be sure to check out our new YouTube channel. The link to that is in the show notes. And check us out at OaklandWarriors.com. And be sure to tell your fellow Warrior fan friends to tune in and listen. The Oakland Warriors podcast is produced by National Film Society and is a part of the Basketball Podcast Network. And if you're so inclined, please do leave us a five-star rating on Spotify and or Apple Podcasts. And leave us a nice review on Apple Podcasts. That would be super helpful and much appreciated. Thanks for listening. That's it. Music in this episode provided by Paper Sun. Special thanks to Paul Amardo for production support. See you next time, and go Dubs. Go Dubs.